this ricotta ourselves, and we actually provide the recipe in our cookbook, which is actually quite easy to make. All you need is a well-calibrated thermometer. It's milk, a little bit of lemon juice, and you have to bring it out to 205, strain it through a cheesecloth, and you have ricotta. It's really, really easy. Um, so, <laughs> this, one, this one was made yesterday, and we strained it overnight in cheesecloth, just to kind of give it some dryness. Um, so we're going to add flour. Uh, a little Parmesan cheese, a little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil, and some herbs, uh, a little flavor. So there's chervil, parsley, tarragon, uh, that's it. And an egg to bind it all together. sausage making, which I find a lot more useful in this fashion. Um, sausage making is really tough, but this is actually very handy. So we're going to fill fill the bag part way. And we have some salted water that's boiling. So we're going to turn it down to simmer, just so it doesn't break the gnocchi up too much. And right over the water, use a knife and just cut them up in there. And they come out this familiar gnocchi shape. Without the pasta. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could have a big uh, uh, pastry tip if you want with a large, large hole, or you could do this, or again, it, it, it's pretty unfussy. You could just take a bag, cut off a little tip, and just bite. It's really easy there. So they cook quite quickly. By the time they float up, they've got about a minute or two left in them. Kind of looking for. Um, Kind of a springy feel to them. Okay, I think that's basically about enough. While that's going, I'm gonna warm up this other pan and the Italian transition uh, tradition. Rather, we're gonna add a little bit of this cooking water first, and we're gonna melt a tiny bit of butter, just because you know it's that. It's, it's that <laughs> It's that bacon thing, right? It's either bacon or butter. <laughs> I'm not sure which one. <laughs> all right, all right, you ask for it. <laughs> and uh, so while this is melting, we're going to add some crab just to warm it up. Again, this is cooked crab. Uh, I'm a big fan of getting whole, uncooked crabs live. Cook them whole, pick the meat, use the shells to make a bisque chowder. Um, there's usually some laying around in my freezer. It's always a lot handy. But of course, meat is hard to extract. There's usually about 60% bone or shell, 40%. And that's if you pick the meat correctly and not eat anything in between while you're picking. <laughs> um, and because we have butter, in there, we're going to add just a tiny bit of lemon juice to counteract all that richness. And uh, I think we're about ready. See how they swell up?
So as you can see, I did this all in front of you. There's no tricks. It, it's all possible. <laughs> <laughs> From start to finish, five minutes, maybe. Um, again, uh, a little bit of Parmesan to bring it together and give it some extra deliciousness. Thank <laughs> you for that word. I was looking for it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And then we have, um, uh, in our restaurant, we use, <coughs> this is kind of part of my, what I describe as holy trinity of seasoning. It's salt and pepper and then something I call persillade, which is a French word for parsley and garlic chopped together. And it's, and it's, it's really uh, uh, an essential ingredient for me. We usually start every day by chopping parsley and garlic and then end every day by ordering more for the next day. <laughs> and uh, it just adds this wonderful touch at the end, wonderful freshness. I use uh, flat leaf Italian parsley. So, and then one other thing that I like to do is take some lemon zest, and we actually uh, do what I call we preserve it. Uh, so it's uh, <coughs> instead of preserving lemons, like you, you would cut them in half, you put them in lemon juice, put them in a lot of salt, and you keep them there for about two months, watch them do nothing. And instead of that, I <laughs> Peel it, blanch it a couple of times, season it with salt and sugar, and boom, I have a preserved lemon here. So um, I'm going to actually pass this around the room so people can actually see the difference. And again, if you start with a little bit of lemon juice and you add lemon zest at the end, it really amplifies the flavor. And so that's really the hallmark of the cooking at Bailey's Place is we build flavors from start. You start with a little bit of lemon juice, you, you emphasize it with lemon at the end. You start with garlic in the beginning, or some herbs, you add them fresh at the end. It really gives you a nice dimension of flavors. So we're gonna garnish it with this, and then a little bit more Parmesan, and voila. Beautiful. 